you see an, a, a Kenyan, you get excited. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a Kenyan, a Kenyan, and you want to, to have this kind of a friendship. The most annoying one to me is the fake ass black power sister, okay? The click sister, the ring leader, the all hail woman power that's not really all hail woman. <laughs> Moda from Mamas, we are excited to have you here. If you haven't subscribed, please show some love, hit that red button. Today, yeah. we have a very interesting topic. We're talking yeah. about toxic relationships. Mm. V, mm. define for us what does that mean? Toxic relationships this means a relationship that is negative, and not only the aspect of boy girl, it's just the aspect of one person to the other. So, a person who's negative, it could be financially, emotionally, physically you know, negative or abusive or whichever way you want to use it. Um, I know a lot of times when we say toxic, we always automatically assume man, woman, 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 man, man, whatever romantic mm -hmm. relationship you have out there. Um, but today we want to cover all of those, not just the yeah. most common, but... So let's get the most obvious one out the way. The toxic um, romantic relationship. I mean, yeah. God knows I've been in one or two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who has it? I think yeah. the saddest thing is that you don't realize you're in it when you're in it. Um, the one that's most common to me that I've seen or I've experienced with my girlfriends is you're always with that person that you're trying to build up. You're trying to, to, you know, I'm your girl, I'm your cheerleader, but they always have something, uh, you know, I've ever dated someone who just, you know, when you're in the lakini when you're your person, you're just, which doesn't make sense because they should be the person that should uplift you, right? Or the kind mm -hmm. of person who always puts down what you do. So every time you do something, they throw a comparison to either an ex they had or, you know, something that always just feeds on your insecurities and pulls you down. And listen, walk away, run away, waste of time, waste of energy will never be anything. Run, gal, run. <laughs> what about girlfriends? You know, oh, friend and you know. I think the, the craziest thing about the girlfriend, yeah. um, it's, it's so hard to peg out or to realize you're in a toxic platonic friendship relationship until usually, it's usually when something so major has happened or you've hit almost rock bottom that you realize, ah, uh -uh, girl, sis ain't your sis. I have had those kind of friends who, to Najangana, you know, we talk to each other, we confide in each other, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, no. I mean, they always have a negative connotation always do or the one who always has to upstage you i call it upstage nancy okay if you break a nail she's like damn that's not as bad as the day i broke two nails you know <laughs> for you and, and for you when you when you were you were you know going to talk to her about a situation you're going through you are hoping she will console you you know yeah. what i mean yes but you you never get that no you so never get that you yes, want to say Paula, it's okay she's, she's she's belittling. yeah it's like she's belittling your situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she not always has a story that is better than yours. Yani, you've been broken hearted. Imagine, imagine, don't even stress it. Me, there's a guy who did this to me. Okay, all right. But sis, I came to tell you, my dude. <laughs> what about, I, I, have, I have been into the secret keeper one. You're going to them hoping that they're going to keep your secret. And mostly here in, in the diaspora. Because when you come to the diaspora and you see an, a, a Kenyan, you get excited. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a Kenyan, a Kenyan. And you want to, to have this kind of a friendship probably with people that you would not have been friends with if you're back home, but you know what I'm saying? Yes. But because you're here and you see them, you feel excited, and then you share everything. Mm -hmm. And probably you're in a party, you're talking a chit chat. once you leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you leave, it's, you're the topic of conversation. And I really, I really dislike that. Like you said, being in diaspora is hard enough on its own, being away from family. And it's just like you said, that excitement. I still remember the first Kenyan I met on campus. Um, if we actually don't talk right now, I wonder where she went. But I remember, and the only way I knew she was a Kenyan is I was passing this chick on campus and she had this little hair piece, I'm a shuka, and I was like, this has to be an African. Like, they don't shuka braids like this abroad, you know. So yeah. and I walked up to her and I said, where are you yeah. from Kenya? And I was so, I was like, oh my God, it's another mm -hmm. Kenyan, you know. And you get really excited. So when you do get to a place where you feel you're sharing mm -hmm. or a place where you're giving emo your emotional output, you expect someone to build you yes. and give something in. But instead, there's people who take, 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 wanna jijenga or wanna distribute between zako kila mahali. So now you feel extremely exposed. And it's one of those things that I really, I, I you know. Yeah, yeah, the betrayal, and once that betrayal and the trust is broken, then there is no more. It is no longer a friendship. And worse, when they introduce you. So another thing I used to learn is, <laughs> I came to learn that especially when you're a bunch of Kenyans in a small place, um, when I say right? <laughs> because, yeah. 
It's such a small circle. They always know when you're the new chick or new dude. And then my problem is a friend who knows, for example, ah, you've seen a dude you think is cute. So you're just the next nyama on the block. You know, everybody knows it, but <laughs> and this is just the encouraging you. Now, even her, a few years ago, she was the nyama on that block. Like, that's another thing where I look at chicks like, stop it. Like, just yeah. help out a sister. And not, not just relationships just let's mm-hmm. just be nice and open with each other but mm-hmm. the most annoying one to me is the fake ass black power sister okay the click sister the ring leader the all hail woman power that's not really all hail woman power. do you know what i'm talking about are you talking about fear of missing out kind of a situation like she has to be the one in in yes. charge she be, so so that she has to be in every situation Mm-hmm. At school, high school, there's always that girl was the leader of the clique, And yes, everybody was yes. her friend, but you guys couldn't have secret scandal. Like you mm-hmm. all had to tell. Mm-hmm. She had to know. If anybody confided in someone personally on a one-on-one level, they'll confide on her. And she comes mm-hmm. to the group and be like, this is happening in the group. But you, you can't just have a That That's the fake black power sister. The sister mm-hmm. that's on Facebook posting about how we love one another. And I'm so glad you and you and you and my life, sis. No, you're not. No, you're not. Because that's the same sis that don't... That, no, those are the really toxic ones because we've reached an age where we're not only promoting each other as in tunapendana, sister yeah. house, we're promoting each other as moms, right? Yes. We do play yes. dates, we give each other ideas where to take our kids, what to do. We're promoting each other as women in relationships. Okay? Yes. People, yes. Are reaching, people are married at different stages, they're reaching different places in the relationship, different mm-hmm. plateaus. Mm-hmm. You need a forum to be able to talk and be like, you know, is this normal? Does this happen? You need someone to tell you, yeah, imagine your dude is still a good dude. Or mm. whatever the case, right? Uh, it's a place where yeah. we're promoting each other's businesses. Yeah. Right? So as a yeah. group of girls, when we sit and talk to na promotiana, if my job mm. is looking for this and this, I'm going to mm. give them your card because I know, you, you feel me? So yeah. that's the yeah. most annoying place to have the fake okay. ass black power yes. because she makes it seem like this is her agenda. But at the end of the day, it's like if you're not completely for her, then you're not. I think it's a control freak, right? It's a yes, control freak. Yes. But, but unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. It goes into family mm. dynamic. Mm-hmm. It goes to family mm-hmm. dynamic. It goes to parents, children kind of a situation mm-hmm. where your parents expect you to understand where they're coming from. If they yeah. punish you, they expect you to understand, yeah. I am doing this because they are not explaining. They are not communicating with you. And yeah. that can build up some anger in you. Yeah. I, it's so funny. I just had this conversation yeah. with my, my boss and another lady yeah. I worked with the other day. Just yeah. Two days ago. And the difference is, she's uh, my boss is from a Latina country. And there's, mm-hmm. of course, me. And the lady you're speaking to is African-American. And we all had the same consensus that for our generation, we did not understand half the time why our asses were getting booked. And for us, the biggest thing was boys also, right? The communication wasn't there. But one thing she said that I did think about is that maybe it is a learned behavior. Maybe that's what their parents gave them because their parents had so many children. You know, they couldn't keep control of all their kids. So the best thing was, to, it was a public service announcement. Period. It's all of you, the good kids, the crazy kids. This is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. And so you have to make a path where you forgive them, right? And then try to yeah, not replicate true. that. Yeah. But yeah. it can be toxic because you do carry it. I do know there's things that have been said to me before, and not just my parents, even my aunts, uncles. And they're trying to, they're trying to help, but the way they say it will still, st- like, I'm still very funny about makeup. Like, I love when I see women wear makeup, and I would love to experiment. Yeah. But I'll put something on my face, and I'll wipe it right. Like, other than my, my lipstick or my lip gloss, I'll wipe it yeah. right off because I do remember... Family was talking about, oh, you don't need, and I, maybe they were just saying you don't need a lot, right? But it was said so yeah. much that it was like, damn, Nikki, my makeup mm-hmm. and the Then when I went to high school in Chad, we had a yeah. teacher who would always say, yeah, I wouldn't mention his name, but Munamujuanga, who's see our teacher. He used to say, Ati, you know, when Jezebel colored her lips, she was going out to fornicate. So I was just like, damn, so now Nikki, my lip gloss. Yes, I think you're going to lip gloss. Does that mean I'll remain? <laughs> But they don't realize how much they impact you as a child. Yeah, you know, it's, <laughs> it's those Yeah, we also have these uncles who are very inappropriate and nobody talks. You know, they do yeah. something, you know, very inappropriate, or they speak in a language that even in front of children and nobody questions them. Yeah, 
yeah 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 that's toxic. very that, that's very toxic and it's usually in i'm sorry it's usually very old uncles who are the same yes. there, or yes. usually the ones who are very young and close in age to their nieces nephews if you see and they're highly sexually inappropriate and it usually yes. i love that it usually starts with something as simple as um you know the songs you could never listen to in front of your parents eh? yes. the, 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 the yeah but right. now those there's those uncles, aunties, there's those even older cousins who are way older than you. Yeah. That now they're teaching you these songs. When I finish these lyrics, they're repeating them in front. That is wrong. That is wrong. They're not to tell you about their experiences, their sexual experiences. That is wrong. That's it's completely toxic. wrong. I feel like this level of, and me, I'm going to call it molestation. Yeah, it is. It is molestation. If you really think about it, it is. Because mm-hmm. you're taking my yeah. mind to a place it wasn't, and yeah. I'm not ready to, to address, okay? Mm-hmm. Now you're putting thoughts in my head. Even if you're talking about yourself and what you did with somebody else, you're teaching me something that I am not ready to accept. But the problem that I find is the biggest is families hide it. Nobody talks about it. We keep yeah, going. nobody that's talks about it. Yeah. And that's, yeah. the, that's the worst part. That's the only thing yeah. that I think I like about being in diaspora is that, dude, you, you, you are actually, away. You are away from that. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. we also have sibling, sibling kind of a situation too, mm-hmm. where there's a lot of competition. And this sibling, sibling can also be families. Okay, yeah. so it's your uncle and your uh, and your parents. They are competing. Yeah. This one buys this, this other one buys it. Or the siblings, where if this one is doing good, this one is so jealous. Mm-hmm. One is like wait when I win, you win too, isn't it? Yes, it should be. It should be because I would think if something happened to me, my sister can take my child and take over. So therefore, if she is winning, in some way we're all winning. But I have, yeah. like you say, where in Anzata Nawazazi, senior, where siblings up there don't agree. It's always Baba Velma and Baba Sarah are in competition. So now yeah. maybe Sarah, in essence, to in competition, even if we're each other's favorite cousins. We're kind of a tag of war because to to it it is toxic and then it's been normalized so much that people don't realize you don't we don't have to be jealous of each other you can succeed oh. and can succeed in different areas you know write our stories in life and just we yeah can, okay we can love one another as family listen I, i'm just here to say guys the toxic relationships gotta go whether it's a yeah. man to woman whether it's a father mother child whether it's sister to sister there's gotta be a time where you cut it off I, and i don't know about you know for a for a girlfriend i can cut it off for a, 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 sex, a romantic kind of a situation i can leave i don't know what you're supposed to do with a family family me i can personally say i have cut off family members before and maybe they okay. don't know they're cut off but if they check their phones they'll realize they've been cut off <laughs> Just because no, it's for it your own good, though. It's yes. for your own good. Because you carry such a burden and you don't realize it. It's so funny when you finally come to a realization, a high relationship, you're not toxic. Then you, it, you're like, how did I not see all this? You know, it's like when you're in a bad relationship, you're in love with your person. Then when you finally break up, you're like, damn, what was I doing? Mm-hmm. I feel it's the same way with the toxic, even with family. I mean, of course, when it's... And, family, and for family, me, and, and for family also, it becomes even tricky because they know your situation. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Probably even they raised you and yeah. they have this expectation of your life. And so if you don't fit in that kind of a plan they had in mind, if you outshine them, mm-hmm. it's, outshine. A it's yeah. a problem. It's a problem. Shine, honey. My light is mine and I believe God gives everybody their journey. Whatever God you worship, I worship Jehovah. Yeah. Everybody has their journey. Like, I like to think about, like, Nikki, a job. I know there's many times where I've been passed for a promotion that I think I'm, it's, it's mine. Like, I, I know yeah. that. I see. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like it's very unfair. But when I sit and think about it, I know God has my journey planned. And that wasn't the one. I've learned not to, not to stress it too much. Yeah. You can think about it. Take your own time within you. But you know what, guys? You get the one life, at least this particular life, like... Use it well. Enjoy your time on earth. Be positive. And it's okay to be you. You never have to conform to anybody else's standards. Ever. Ever. Just be Velma. Just be Sarah. Just be a mother. Right? Yes. (laughs) I'm just saying. And it's okay to be by yourself because you, listen, God made the best version of you. I like that. I like that. So it's all right. God will say, the same thing I say, God will send you a good man. At a girlfriend, and by then, they're friends <laughs> with their sisters. If it ends up that it's your sisters or brothers or uncles or aunties who are toxic, God's got you. You don't need nobody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
I like that. Okay. Thank you so much for tuning in. Leave your comments. Let us know what you think, what you feel, what you've experienced. And we will see you next time. More that from Mama. Bye. Bye.